Welcome to Flutter Teacher. In this session, we will talk about two most important topics in the Dart, and these are method overriding and polymorphism. So, without wasting time, let's get started. Let's start from the method overriding. You can observe here in this code we have two different classes. We have the class called clock and we have the digit clock here. So, clock class is acting as a super class that contains a method run. And it is simply printing a message clock is running. Then we have the class called digital clock, which is acting as a subclass and that extends the clock as the superclass. And the observable thing is there is nothing inside this digital clock. So as we know that whenever we have a subclass and that extends the superclass, all the members of superclass except the constructor will get inherited in the subclass. It means all the members of this clock class except the constructor will now become the members of this digit clock. What is inheritance and why constructor is not inherited? So if you want to get all this detail, go ahead and watch the video where I have talked about inheritance and the 10 different questions related to inheritance. So if you know all these concepts, then uh, you're good to go to continue with this video. So you can observe here the method run in the clock class will now inherit inside this digit clock. It means even if we can't see this method, it is actually present inside this digital clock class. That's the reason in main we have the object of this digital clock which is stored inside the reference called ref. And over ref, when I'm calling this method run, you can observe here the method run that is the method of this clock class that is the method of super class is getting called here. Because when there is no method or when there is no implementation present in the subclass method, by default the superclass method get called and that is what happening here. Now it's possible that the subclass that is this digital clock class can have the same run method as that of its superclass. So I can copy this line and I can paste it inside the digital clock and let me change its implementation. So I have written here digital clock is running. So you can observe here what I have done here. Here I have written exactly same method as present in the superclass. It means while writing this run method, we have a same written type same method name and the same parameter list. So this type of process is known as the method overriding. Let me tell you technically what is the definition of method overriding. Redefining superclass method in subclass is known as the method overriding. It means by default a subclass is getting method from superclass even though a subclass can have its own method or own implementation of the same method which is actually present in a superclass. So you have to make sure that the return type, name of method and parameter list must match with the name or with the method present in the superclass. It means we should have the same signature of method in a subclass as well as in a superclass. So this is called as the method overriding. Now based on which object you are using to call the method, your appropriate method will be called. You can observe here. Let me delete this digital form here. You can see uh, in line number 16. This ref is referring to the object of clock. So when I run it, you can observe on a console, I will get output say the clock is running because I'm using the clock object to call this method. But if I use say object of digital clock and if I rerun this program, you can observe here as we have the object of digital clock, I'm getting the output say digital clock is running means when we have a subclass object, then the method presenting subclass will be invoked. And when we have the object of superclass, then the superclass method will be invoked. Now as per Dart recommendation, it is recommended that whenever we have the overridden method, we should write the annotation called override. So let me write here at the rate and override. This override annotation is mostly uh, used or it is recommended so that a programmer should understand that this particular method is not the individual or it is not a new method of the subclass, rather it is the overridden method of the superclass. Now you might have a big question in your mind, why subclass should override a method? It means by default subclass is getting a method, means by default ready uh, the subclass is getting a method. Then why subclass or why someone should override method in a subclass? So there are two different reasons for overriding a method. Uh, listen to the first reason or the first uh, point here. Consider uh, as per your system Im implementation or there might be a requirement in a subclass that it should have different version of method present in a subclass than the superclass. Means superclass should have a method and that should have some code that should have some implementation. But the subclass 
must have a different implementation rather than the implementation present in the superclass method so that based on which object you are using means if you are using the superclass object then your old implementation will be invoked and if we have the subclass object in this situation your new implementation uh, will be invoked so uh, you can create two different versions of method and we can have two, two different logics or whatever task that you want to do in these two different methods so this is the first situation now uh, there might be a second situation so uh, consider you want to go with your existing method means uh, you want your existing method so, but along with this implementation or along with the logic that is present in this uh, superclass method you want to do some additional things means you are happy with this method there is no problem you want this implementation but along with this the subclass should have some more functionality or some have some additional uh, things or you might say say enhanced features so what we can do inside this run method i can call the superclass run method here so let me write here say uh, super dot run so if you don't know what is this super and what is the meaning of the super dot run don't worry uh, in my upcoming videos i will talk about this uh, super and uh, what is the use of this super basically now let me run this program here you can observe here i'm calling a run method over this uh, digital clock object so as this digital clock is object of subclass you can observe here the run method that is the overridden method of this uh, subclass is getting invoked inside this i have called to this uh, super dot run so it will call the run method of superclass that's why i'm getting output say clock is running and once it is finished i'm getting output digital clock is running so here we output called digital clock is running so technically what is happening here in this run method i'm reusing uh, the functionality which is i'm getting from the superclass and along with that one i can implement or i can write some additional features or some say new logics inside your run method so if i want to go with old so i can simply use run but if i want to go with some old and along with new features i can call the uh, run method of the uh, subclass instead of the superclass method the old method that is the method present in superclass is known as the overridden method so let me write here overridden method And the new method that we have defined inside the subclass is known as overriding method. So let me write here overriding method. So I hope it's very much clear for you what is basically method overriding and why to do that one technically. Let's talk about polymorphism. Polymorphism is a Greek word that consists of two words, poly and morph. Poly means many and morph means forms that is different types. Technically for object oriented programming polymorphism is defined as the ability of an object to appear in multiple forms. It means when we have a, a particular object then the single object is capable of doing variety of things or various things based on the different input or different parameters or based on the different situation. Let's understand the general example for inheritance. Uh, consider my example here. When I'm recording a video, I'm playing a role of YouTuber. When I'm going in office, I'm talking with the boss, then I'm playing a role of employee. And when I'm going with my friends and I'm talking with them, then I'm playing a role of friend. And when I'm going in a home and I'm talking with my father, then I'm playing a role of a child. So as a person, I will behave differently with my friend and with my father and with my boss in the company. So I won't have a same behavior when I'm talking with my boss and I'm talking with my friend. So I will have a different uh, nature or I will have a different way of uh, myself means I will have the different way of speaking with them. So based on situation what will happen everybody goes on changing its nature. Uh, he goes on talking the different things. So this particular thing uh, will be done by the object means based on different inputs or based on the different values that object have object will behave differently means the same object will behave differently based on different situation different values or let's say the different parameters that are passed to the object basically there are two different types of polymorphism the compile time polymorphism and the runtime polymorphism the polymorphism which is achieved during compile time means uh, what thing to do uh, what task to do it is decided by the compiler during compile time so that type of polymorphism is called uh, the compile time polymorphism so if you are a person from C++ or Java, you might have heard that uh, Java uh, supports uh, the method overloading and constructor overloading. That helps it uh, to make it uh, the compile time polymorphism. But as that don't have 
the method overloading and we don't have a constructor overloading basically we can write multiple constructors but uh, we can't overwrite means uh, we can't have uh, same name for constructor we have to write uh, named constructor so that's why i can't say that it is the exact example of uh, compile time polymorphism in the dart but if we have a method having a generic so that method may look or that method uh, little behave like a compile time polymorphism method but i'm not saying it's actually a compile time polymorphism but uh, those who understand what is this method with generic so uh, it looks like it is having a compile time polymorphism so but i'm sorry if you don't know generic and if you didn't understood this example okay let's ignore it now let's talk about this runtime polymorphism now the polymorphism which is achieved during runtime is known as the runtime polymorphism it means uh, what things to do which method to call or what action to perform is not decided by the compiler rather it will be decided during runtime based on uh, the situation or based on the values or based on the uh, parameters that object is having or the value that object is holding based on that one uh, the appropriate action or appropriate method uh, to be executed will be decided and that is simply known as the runtime polymorphism let's understand runtime polymorphism with an example program we have two different classes the clock and the digital clock that's uh, what we have seen right now in the same video so the clock a class acts as the super class having a run method that prints clock is running and the digital clock class has again the same method run which is actually the overridden method and that prints the message digital clock is running so we have a super class called clock and we have a subclass called digital clock and we have implemented a concept called method overriding which we have seen right now now the most important thing in this program is a main method you can observe in the main in line number 15 we have a reference area which is referring to the clock object that is object of super class and we have invoked the method on that reference then in line number 18 uh, we have the same reference but now it is referring to the object of digital clock that is the object of subclass and again i have invoked the same method called run on the reference you can observe here line number 16 and line number 19 they are the same line even when I run this means even this line are same you can observe I am not getting the same result I am getting a different result. So this is basically known as the polymorphism and as this is happening runtime it is the runtime polymorphism. Now let me explain how it is a runtime polymorphism. So as we know when we have an overridden method then means when we have a method overriding uh, then which method to call means whether to call method from super class or sub class it depends on what object you have. So you can observe here as we have in line number 15 ARIAF is referring to object of super class that's why while calling a run method it is invoking the super class run method and we are getting output called clock is running. On other hand in line number 18 the same reference is now referring to the object of super class. So now at this time when I am calling run method it is calling the method of a run that is method a run of the subclass and not the super class. And hence we are getting the output called digital clock is running. So which method to call is not decided during compile time. Rather it is decided during runtime. So this is called as the runtime polymorphism. Because uh, the reference can hold a different type of uh, object means as it is uh, the reference it can hold the object of super class. It can even hold the object of subclass. But uh, which method to call means which run to call. You can observe here we have the same run in line number 16 and same in the line number 19. But which one to call uh, is decided not during compile time. It is decided during the uh, run time. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video.